Hey, welcome to Oasis Church Online. I'm Greg Myers, worship leader here, and uh, we're so glad that you've joined us today, and uh, we're looking forward to what God's going to do and hope you experience real life in Jesus through the worship time. So won't you pray with me? Father, we thank you for the day. God, we thank you for who you are. You are Almighty God, and we look forward to worshiping you this morning at Oasis Church. God, I pray that uh, you just uh, work in our hearts. God, uh, uh, just speak to us uh, through the music and through the word today. We look forward to what you're going to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glad you're with us here this morning.
Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Oasis Church online and in person. I'm Pastor Bob, and I'll be leading us this morning, and I'm in my front room. That must mean something. I'm not able to be at church, haven't been for a couple weeks. First of all, I threw out my back, and then I developed some type of sinus infection. And, you know, we've been saying that if you're sick and you're not feeling well, you probably shouldn't be in church. And so, therefore, I'm here in my front room. Now, I know that you're not used to watching up on the big screens, but that's really the best that we can do this week because Pastor Augie is on vacation, and so the show must go on, right? Well, welcome, and I'm glad you're here with us. Now, two weeks ago, we kicked off our series, This Is Us. This is the series that we've been talking about for several weeks that where we're laying out the vision, the structure, strategy, and direction of Oasis Church for the next three to five years. Now, a couple weeks ago, we started with the overview. And now, if you haven't watched that overview, I want to encourage you to go back to either Facebook or YouTube or even to our website and look at that, where we overview everything that kind of took place and the whole idea at one time. Last week, Pastor Augie talked about the mission statement. Now, I want to go over that mission statement one more time, okay? Hopefully, you have it memorized. I think I've got it memorized finally. Now let's see, Oasis Church exists to lead our community to life transformation that can only be found in Jesus. Now let me put that up here on the screen. Okay, let's read this together, everybody, all right, all at one time, here we go. Oasis Church exists to lead our community to life transformation found only in Jesus. Now, When Augie talked about this, he said that there were three aspects to this vision statement. Community, life transformation, and if you were here, you heard a life transformation story last week. I hope it blessed you. It blessed me. That can only be found in Jesus. Now, there is one more word that I want to talk about in this passage, in this mission statement, um, before I kind of go on to new material this morning, and it's the word lead. Now, a long time ago, Um, I learned a definition of what it means to lead. Um, And, you know, Webster's defines it kind of saying that, you know, it's from going from one place to another place by leading somebody by the hand, a halter, a rope, or whatever it may be. The second one might be leading would be being in charge or being in command of something. Well, one of the definitions that I learned a long time about leading, okay, is to lead is to take people from one place to another place and more than likely they don't want to go to that place. Um, that's what leadership is because let's, let, let's just face it. If everybody wanted to go in the same direction, there wouldn't be a lot of leadership required. To lead our community in life transformation, look, this is going to be difficult because people, a lot, they're not even looking for life transformation a lot of times. They're satisfied with their life. And what we want to do as a church is to lead our community to find someone who can bring them life transformation, and that's the Lord Jesus. So taking people where they don't want to go, that's what leadership is. That's why that word was very specifically put in our mission statement. We want to lead people to life transformation that can only be found in Jesus Christ. Now, Let's move on because we said that we were going to each week we were going to go through our one page, if you want to call it strategy, structure, vision, and we're going to move on to the second part. We're going to move on over here to this blue shade over here called values. Let me just ask you a question. Matter of fact, if you're in person, I'm going to ask them to stop the video and my moderator. Um, that is there taking my place today, I hope is going to have a a couple minute discussion with you. And if you're online today, I would love to see your responses in the chat. I will be in the chat, okay? Um, I will be there. I would love to chat with you back and forth uh, about this. But let me ask you the question. What's really important to you? Think about that. What's really important to you?
Now, I hope you got some good responses. You know, there's a lot of things that are important to me. For example, uh, most recently, my health. Man, I was frustrated, okay, when uh, all I could do was basically, uh, well, I couldn't even get up. I needed somebody's help to get me up. Okay, so when my back was out, I was in a lot of pain. Uh, I was frustrated. I remember one night sitting on the couch and kind of ha having a tantrum, really. I threw my food down on the, ta uh, on the table that was in front of me. I said, I've had it, and I'm going to bed. I was frustrated. And a lot of times, you know, what's important to me is my health. You know what else is important to me? My family. My family is important to me. Now, I have two grown kids, okay? I have um, a, a beautiful wife, and I have a mom that lives with me. They're extremely important to me, okay? So my family is important to me. And you know, what's really important also to me is I want to know that when I lived my life and when it's complete, that I did well, okay? That I did well. That's, that really is somewhat important to me, okay? Now, what's important to you? Well, let's change the question now. What should be important to a church, okay? Now, lots of different organizations out there, churches included, have different values, okay? I looked up a few of them, you know, like Adidas, okay? Um, the, 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 the sportswear, Adidas, their values, okay? If you look it up on their website, are, are performance, passion, integrity, and diversity. Now, that's a good group of values right there, and they, and they define each of those, Okay. Uh, then everybody's favorite store, I think that's uh, more in the Phoenix area, is Ikea, right? Well, they have lots of different values. They have humbleness and willpower, leadership by example, daring to be different, togetherness and enthusiasm. They have all these different values that they have at Ikea. So what about the church? Should the church have values? We think so. A lot of the people in leadership think so because they say that values actually determine what the church values. It determines the church's purpose, its vision, its decision, its, its direction, and its ministries, as well as its priorities. When I was thinking about church and church values, the purpose of having church values, it keeps the church, the local church, on mission. Secondly, I think it, it, it motivates us to fulfill the mission of what God told us to be about. It encourages us as members to know what's important to us as a membership. It keeps the church goals, if you want to call it, clearly in mind. Values can create passion, okay, and an excitement when we see those values living out within the membership and the body of Christ helps us to reach our goals. It can help us and keep us from becoming discouraged. See, values are important, and all churches have values, okay? No matter what church you go to, whether they're written or unwritten, churches have values. What's important to them? What we wanted to do is to list our values. We want everyone to know what our values are, to be able to see them, and not only to see them, to begin to live them out, okay, in their day-to-day -day life. That's why we have these values. Now, let me share with you um, a couple of our values. Matter of fact, there's five of them, and if you haven't figured out, they're, they're up there on the wall already as you're looking up there, but they all start with the letter R, okay? So let me catch up here. We're talking about our values, okay, and the very first value we're going to discuss this morning is the value of being real, okay? And we define real, it's right up here on the board. It says, we're gonna pursue authenticity in all areas of life and ministry. Now, sometimes the best way to say that is we're gonna be transparent, or better yet, we're not going to be fake here. We choose to be real. You see what you see, okay? And you get what you get. Um, and the Bible is full of a lot of people who are real. Now, when we talk about values, sometimes values are what I call aspirational. In other words, we aspire to that value, or it's already a demonstrated value. 
One of the strengths of Oasis Church going forward is it's a real church. Okay, we don't pretend anything. We're not fake about anything. What you see is what you get. Okay, and sometimes you may not like it, but what you see is what you get. We're not having hidden agendas. We're not out trying to do secret things. We're trying to be real and trying to be real with people. Now, in Matthew, I, I believe in chapter, let me put it up here on the board, Matthew chapter 6, he basically takes, Jesus takes this whole passage to talk about hypocrisy and, and, and religious leaders. And he really, he hammers them, okay? Because he, he, he starts off by saying, beware of practicing, okay? There's a key word there, practicing righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. See, we don't want to be a church that's doing ministry so we get a good name for ourselves or that we're seen. What we want to do is we want to be real. We want to love people. We want to be real with people. And we want to be real with one another. And he goes on and he talks about that. He says, well, he, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of good things, and, uh, but you're, you're, you're not doing it for the right motivation. And so we want to be real. And he goes on and says, but when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving can be in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, don't pray so that you can be seen. Don't pray that you can be heard. Pray earnestly. Pray real prayers. Pray from the heart. So being real is very important to us going forward. Now, the Bible has lots of different examples of people being real. Peter was pretty real. I was thinking about that. I was just reading through the, the, the crucifixion in, uh, in the Gospel of John. And, and Peter, you know, right in the middle of Jesus being arrested, um, Peter is, you know, he's full of himself at this point, And, you know, he's already told the Lord Jesus that he won't deny him. And he's already said that, you know, wherever you go, Lord, I'll go. And, and Peter reaches out right in the middle of the arrest. And he, and he reaches out and he, in, in anger and he, he chops off the ear of the servant. Now, Peter was pretty real. Okay. Peter said what came to his mind. Um, I don't think Peter had a whole lot of secret agendas. And then just a few days ago, we were reading about the woman at the well. Um, and she was a pretty real person, too, when Jesus confronted her and began to develop relationship with her and began to talk with her. And, and the woman at the well was very real. She admitted, okay, she admitted her sin. See, that's what real people do. They admit their sin. They admit that we're not perfect. They admit that they don't have everything all together. They admit that sometimes life is a struggle. They admit when they need help. That's called being real. And that's got to be a value of Oasis Church going forward, that we will pursue authenticity in all of our relationships. Now, the second value okay, that I'm thinking about this morning is the word relevant. And, and this is another uh, a value that is what I would call a demonstrated value. We um, are already practicing this, but it's also aspirational. It's something that we need to improve on as we try to reach our community. Relevancy. We will follow Jesus' example by being practical, applicable, and helpful. Let me pop up the scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Why don't you read that up here with me? It basically says that if Paul says this. He says, to the weak, I become weak. To win the weak, I become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. I do this for the sake of the gospel that I might share in its blessing. Now, this being relevant, okay, is going to be really important going forward. Being relevant is meeting people wherever they're at. It's knowing who your audience is, knowing who your, and I don't want to say the word, but target is, and be able to relate to them in a way that they can understand the message of Christ. And I'm going to tell you something, that's going to be different for everyone. 
I mean, it's different in the youth department. It's different in the children's department. It's different with women. It's different with men. And we have to figure out a way to be relevant in every single aspect of our church. I've already tasked our children's uh, ministry leader and our youth ministry leader and our Hispanic ministry leader and our small group ministry leader and to be able to, how are we going to be relevant with the age group that you have, with the people that are already assigned to you? How will you be relevant? That's an important value going forward because we have an important message an important message, a life-saving message that we must be relevant when we give it. So, thinking about relevancy, maybe you relate to this. Back when I was growing up in church, I attended a Southern Baptist church. We did Sunday school, and every week um, the story was told on a flannelgram. Now, I don't know if you even know what a flannelgram is anymore. But it's a felt board, and they would take the paper pieces of, uh, of the Bible characters, and they would throw them up on there, and they would stick, okay? Back then, that was creative. Back then, that was imaginative. Back then, that held the attention of people like me. Now, if I try that same technique today, it may work, and you're going to have to be very good at doing it, but we're probably going to have to look for a more relevant way to take that same message that kids who are growing up in a generation of electronics, a generation of technology, a generation of you know information at their fingertips. And we're going to have to figure out how to be able to take this important message of the gospel and be relevant to them. And at the same way, people like me and people who are older than me, we have to figure out how to be relevant to them as well. It is a, can I say it, daunting task. I can't believe I use the word daunting, okay? But it is a daunting task to be relevant in every single aspect of our church. So, the third, okay? And probably one of the ones that I believe is an aspirational value and um, a demonstrated value, and it's the idea of being relational. Now, when we're talking about being relational, we're talking about the def how we've defined it is, is we will meet people where they are to develop love-based relationships. Now, Oasis Church is very good at doing this on the inside. I'm going to tell you, we have a good small group network. I'm, I hear stories after stories of, again, small groups and small group leaders shepherding, guiding, leading, loving, coming alongside of others in their small group. I mean, inside of the body, we do that fairly, fairly well. What we have to learn to do better, and why I call this an aspirational okay, value, is we got to learn to do this with our community. How do we build relationships with our community? We've talked about that. We're in the process of trying to do that in the two uh, areas that we have responsibility over, over on Avenue A, on 3rd Street, those housing areas. What we're doing is building relationship because when we build relationship, when we meet people where they're at, okay, when we develop those love-based relationships, we earn the right, okay, and I said that correctly, we earn the right to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Being relational. Now, did you know in the Bible, relationships are talked about a lot. Matter of fact, um, you know, 59 times, okay, 59 times in the Bible does the word one another come up. For example, to be at peace with one another, or to wash one another's feet, or to love one another to be devoted to one another, to honor one another, to live in harmony with one another, stop passing judgment on one another. The Bible is all about relationships and building those relationships. That's an important value to us, again, going forward. Now, the fourth value I want to talk to you about is the word radical. And when I talk to you about the word radical, we debated a long time about this word because of what it means today. 
uh, you know, radical this or radical that may not be such a good thing today, but to be radical for Jesus, I think, is a completely different scenario. We prayed a lot about this word, okay? Radical. We will do anything short of sin to reach people with the gospel. Now, I wish this was a demonstrated value, but this is truly an aspirational value. This is something that we have to aspire to do. We would do anything. Would you do anything? I mean, short of sin. I'm not asking you to commit sin. I'm not asking you to go against God's word. But would you do anything, okay, anything that someone might come to know Christ? I mean, if God told you, and I'm not saying he is, and I don't speak for him at all, but let me tell you, but, but would you quit your job right now so that one person could come to know Christ? I mean, that's a tough question, isn't it? That's radical, okay? Now, let me tell you about somebody that was radical, okay, in the New Testament. And you're going to find him in Luke chapter 19 here. Um, Zacchaeus. You know, you know the song, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. Well, Zacchaeus was a short guy, okay? And he knew that Jesus was coming by. And, and, and it was crowded, okay? I know that because that's what the Bible says, okay? It was crowded, and you know what Zacchaeus did? He didn't let the crowd or the size of the crowd or the number of the crowd keep him from being able to see Jesus. You know what he did? He climbed up in a tree. That's right. He was radical. Nothing was going to stop him from seeing Jesus, so he climbed up in a tree to be able to see Jesus. So what would being radical look like at Oasis Church? And that's a good question. That's something that where the dreamers come in, and, and when we begin to you know, dream about what would it look like to be able to reach boys and girls, and men and women? What would it look like to be able to reach the population of people that nobody else wants to reach? What would it look like to reach the homeless? What would it look like to reach those who are having difficulties with finances or marriages or foster kids or anything along those lines? What radical idea do you have that's not sin that we could reach out into this community and tell them about Jesus. Man, if you've got an idea, man, I want to hear it. I'd love for you to email me. I'd love for you to text me. I'd love for you to call me. I, uh, Bob, I've got a great idea. Okay? Great ideas. Okay? Radical ideas. So the last value I want to talk to you about this morning is the one that's called rooted. Now, we define rooted as we're going to stand. This is important to us as a church. We're going to stand firm on the foundation of Jesus and his teachings. Let me say that again. We're going to stand firm on the foundation of Jesus and his teachings. When we started doing structure and strategy and vision, we understand and we know that we have to help people be rooted. Okay? You know the passage that comes from Matthew chapter 7. The one that talks about uh, the one who builds a home on the sand. And when the storms come, and, and they will come, the wind blows, and the house came down because it didn't have a, what, firm foundation. And we want every single person, okay? Like I said now, girl and boy, men and women, young and old, single and married, I think I covered them all to be and to have a deep foundation in Jesus Christ. Now, some of us have that already as a demonstrated value. Some of us, that's aspirational. But let me tell you something. We're going to provide an opportunity, an avenue, for you to be able to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. My question to you is, do you want to be rooted do you want that strong foundation that when the wind blows and the storm comes, and they will, and they have, and they are currently, what's going to happen to your foundation? See, we want everyone to be rooted in Jesus Christ. Now, let me pop this up here one more time up here on the board. It says that Oasis Church exists to lead our community to life transformation 
found only in Jesus. Now, let me add to that, this page here. It says, by being real, relevant, relational, radical, and rooted. Those are our values. Now, I wish I was with you in person, but I can't be. But one of our elders is now going to come to the front, and they are going to answer any questions that you have reference to these values. Now, we got to stay, okay, on, the, uh, on topic, okay, because they may not be prepared to talk to you about the, the go, grow, and go strategy, okay? Um, but they can talk to you about the values, all right? So if there are any questions, I want you to just go ahead now and ask those questions. Let me pray, okay? And then you can ask your questions. And if you're here online with us, I'll be in the chat rooms. You can talk with me about any of those relational values. I'll be there, whether you're on YouTube, okay, Facebook, all right, or you're watching, watching on Church Online, okay? I can do all three of them at one time. So I can chat with all of you at the same time. So um, again, if you've got any questions online, um, I'll be there in person. One of our elders will be there. Let me pray um, and then um, have a discussion. God, thank you for the morning. Thank you for the privilege of being in a local New Testament church. Father, a church that wants to make a difference for your name's sake. God, we don't want to be popular. We don't want to be um, bigger than what you want us to be. But what we want to be found, Father, is faithful. We want to be found faithful until you call the church home. And so, Father, help us to live these values. Help us also, Father, to understand that these values uh, need to be personal, that they need to be lived within each and every one of us. And God, that these values become a part of our regular conversation of, of how we and what we do with our life. Lord, I praise you. I thank you. I thank you for the privilege of technology and what we're able to do today that we couldn't do just a few years ago. God, thank you again for giving the church grace and God not calling it home yet and giving it a, a very important mission to be the salt, to be the light of the world. God, may this church, God, may Oasis Church be found faithful. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. God bless you. I'm online. And again, whoever's leading this morning is there in person. <laughs>